How, why for so long did we all think Adam Smith had a gigantic head? Like, why did we think this? In part, it's because the people who wrote this stuff, the late scholastics, they didn't write books on economics for the most part. They wrote great moral treatises. And in the course of their moral treatises, they referred to economic topics. But they never had a book that said, here's our stuff on economics. So it was easy to overlook it. In addition, they wrote in Latin. And by and large, scholars today, particularly in economics, are not known for reading Latin. And so this was simply forgotten. And only now are we digging it out and saying, Catholics did this too. It's unbelievable. So I would say that we put this all together, and we haven't even talked about art and architecture. I assume that's taken for granted. The Catholic Church built Western civilization. And yet, not to beat a dead horse here, but this is one dead horse that amply merits a substantial beating. The European Union Constitution refuses to acknowledge the Catholic inheritance. Not a word. Western civilization comes from the ancient world, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, and that's it. And whatever happened in between, uh, nobody really knows, couldn't possibly have been very important. I, seriously, only an imbecile could believe this now, given all the evidence that's out there. But this is what we're told by the European Union. And it can't just be ignorance. It isn't just that they're, they're dummies and they haven't done their reading. It can't be that. Because nobody who would presume to make a statement officially on behalf of the European Union could be that uneducated. It's frankly because of hostility toward the church. There is a hostility toward the church. We all know it. And in fact, this colors people's statements and judgments. They're not gonna, they don't want to give the church credit for things. My own theory is that one of the reasons a lot of secular intellectuals despise the church is that the church, in effect, reproaches them for their immoral lifestyles. They don't like being told they're not supposed to do this and that. And every time they see the church, it's a reproach to them. And so, therefore, they have to wipe it out. They have to destroy it. They have to ignore it. But we refuse to go away, don't we? We refuse to go away. Well, after the break, we're going to talk about the state of Western civilization right now. Look around at the art world a little bit, the state of things, and see what, if anything, we can do about this. And what can we do to take this knowledge and spread it out there to the world? I wrote a book called How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization because I hoped it could help to spread this knowledge among the general population. Let's see what else we can try to do to make people aware of what an extraordinary treasure the world has in the Catholic Church. Supernaturally, yes, but even on a natural level, all the glorious things she's done. How do we spread that around? Let's talk about that after the break, and we'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back to the Catholic Church, Builder of Civilization. I'm Thomas Woods. Today we're sort of summing things up and then looking forward. We're looking at things the church has done in the past and then thinking about what are we going to do in the future? What are we going to do to redeem Western civilization? Build it back up again to where it belongs. Now, I think if you were to take a quick glance, for example, at the world of art today, it's probably not fair to say all of modern art is just a complete disaster. Uh, I don't think anyone would really say that. However, I think we can say that there seems to be a relationship between a civilization's view as to whether there really is a transcendent, there's something that is beyond our experience, and a civilization that doesn't believe that, that believes in materialism. Materialism, in this sense, doesn't mean greed. It means believing that matter is all there is. If, if something isn't physical, then it doesn't exist. That's what materialism teaches. And it seems to me fairly obvious that the type of art you would see in those different types of civilizations would differ from each other. And this is a point that Jude Doherty made. He's the Dean Emeritus of the School of Philosophy at the Catholic University of America. And he's made this point. He asked the question, could a great Gothic cathedral, or indeed Gothic architecture in general, 
Could that have been built in a materialistic culture? And likewise, could some of the hideous things that we see around us all the time, what Doherty calls Lego set architecture, we're surrounded by everywhere, would that have been built in an age and a culture that believed in the transcendent? When you, in effect, when you believe in materialism, what you're saying is that there is no meaning to life. If all there is is matter, matter if matter is just dead, it has no purposes, then there is no meaning to anything if there's no transcendent. And if you really believe that life has no meaning, it would be a miracle if that belief weren't in fact reflected in your art. And we see that. Of course, we see that everywhere. Now, I suppose it's shooting fish in a barrel to criticize some of the excesses of modern art, so I'm not going to do that. There's a little bit of that in my book, and you can find that all over the place. But I do remember walking into my classroom back in the years when I was a professor in New York, and I had a newspaper article, and I said to them, this is a Western Civ course, I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to update you on the state of Western civilization. And I read to them this news item. And it was a news item about the Turner Prize exhibition uh, in England, which is a prestigious uh, art prize. And one of the exhibits was called The Lights Going On and Off. And in this exhibit, the artist, so-called, flicked on the lights, flicked on and off the lights of the facility. And this produced an interesting effect, apparently. And that was his work of art. Hmm. I know what you're all thinking. I can flick lights and on and off, too. I, kn I know. I'm thinking the same thing. Also in recent years, at major prize competitions, more than once, the janitorial staff has mistakenly thrown these art exhibits in the garbage, assuming that they were trash. What does that say to you about the state of the civilization? Now, if we Catholics don't defend ourselves. As I said at the beginning, nobody is going to do it for us. We've got a glorious civilization behind us. We've produced some extraordinary art that is admired by people all over the world. Now, it's true, though, that we're not Catholics because we produced great art. We're not Catholics because the church helped to foster the university or because the church encouraged the sciences. These are all wonderful things. That's not why we're Catholic. But there are a couple of benefits that come from knowing this information. And the first one is that a lot of people do believe a lot of negative things about the church, don't they? A lot of people believe these negative things. So if we can show them that they're mistaken, that in fact a lot of these misconceptions are exactly that. They're just misconceptions without historical foundation. We will have struck down an obstacle to their conversion. So it is important to know this knowledge, even if it's not the reason that we're Catholics. It will help us when we interact with people who have deeply embedded prejudices. But remember, nobody's going to defend ourselves if we don't defend us. We have to defend ourselves. We have to be prepared to tell people these things when they come up and say the church has been nothing but a blight. We have to have an answer for that because they're not going to have the answer. We need to give them that answer. But secondly, these things help to confirm our own faith. And what I mean by that is that we should expect Christ's church to bear such wonderful temporal fruits. Because if the church really is what she claims to be, she's the bride of Christ, she's a divine institution, then naturally we would expect her to bear great supernatural fruits in the form of grace and the sacraments. But we should also expect her to bear great temporal fruits. And when we in fact confirm that and we see that, it helps to confirm our faith, doesn't it? It helps to confirm our faith. Now, looking at the state of Western civilization, our past couple of popes have been frankly saddened and have noted the attempt by people to pretend that the Catholic inheritance is dispensable or perhaps doesn't even exist. You cannot think of constructing a common European house neglecting the very identity of the peoples of our continent. That's what Pope Benedict XVI said recently. He's very interested in this subject of how do we redeem Europe. Pope John Paul II, on one of the nine or so trips to Poland that he took during his pontificate, said this to the crowd. 